Hello, hello. Good day, everyone. Uh, this is the third in the series for our video tutorial in drawing the shear and moment diagram for a particular beam. So once again, the, this is Dr. Ram at your service. And let me give you one example for the drawing of the shear diagram. So as you can see here in our figure, we have a simply supported beam. This is point A and this is point C. So what we are going to do is to draw the shear diagram for this particular beam loaded with a triangular load of 18 kilonewton per meter beginning at A with a zero value up to 18 kilonewton per meter and we are going to set this to be five meters while this one is three meters remember these are all drawn not to scale so we have the 80 kilonewton per meter here which is the applied load starting from a zero value at point a where the reaction is also located and then at point c there is another reaction for the beam support reaction so we have a hinge support and a roller support so what we are going to do is to draw the shear diagram so the first thing that we have to do is again to determine the reactions at a and C. How do we determine the reactions at A and C? We take summation moment at either point A or point B. I sorry, point C. So once we have the reactions, then you can now draw the shear diagram. So let me start with taking summation moment at A is equals to zero. Again, our sign convention all forces going clockwise is positive. So since we have at point A, now we will take moment at point A, therefore we will have the reaction at point C. So the reaction at point C multiplied by the perpendicular distance from point A, which is 5 plus 3 meters. So that is 8 meters. Shall be equated with, this is a triangular load. Okay. So the triangular load starts from 0, going up to 18 kilonewton per meter up to point B which is five meters from point A. So the principle is the area of the load diagram corresponds to the equivalent shear at that particular point. So you have the area of the load, which is equivalent to one half base, this is a triangular load, so that means we have one half base times height. Wherein our base here is five meters, and the height here is 18 kilonewton per meter. So this value of one half times base times height, one half times five times 18 is the equivalent concentrated load. From our previous topic, or from the previous vlog that I have, I have shown you the video that I have shown you, we have the equivalent concentrated load okay, for a rectangular section or rectangular load. So this time, we are going to have equivalent concentrated load 
this is equivalent concentrated load. This is this time a triangular load. So the triangular load that we have here will be the equivalent, uh, the area of which will be the equivalent concentrated load. So that is one half times base times height. And take note that one half five times 18, this is 45 kilo Newton. So the equivalent concentrated load is 45 kilo Newton. Now the location of the equivalent concentrated load from point A is two thirds of the span of the load. So we have yet to determine this value of x. According to the principle, that is simply equals to two thirds of the span. While this distance is one third of the base. So this is five over three, while this one is two third of base times of base of the load. So if we are going to, let's say this is R sub A, this one will be two third of five. That is two thirds of five. So what we are going to do is to take moment. So since we have here the area which of the load, which is equivalent concentrated load, equivalent to 45 kilonewton. And if you are going to take moment at A, then that would mean we have the distance here, we're going to multiply it by two thirds times this distance, which is five meters. So we will now be able to determine the reaction at C. And if we are going to calculate, we will have this is equivalent to 75 over 4, or that is 18 point, 18 point 75 kilo Newton. Now we will take summation moment at C is equals to zero. Clockwise positive. In this particular case, we will be able to determine the reaction at A if you take moment at point C. So reaction at A, you multiply it by eight, is equals two because the perpendicular distance from point C of reaction at A is eight meters. That would be equivalent to, or is equals to, again, the concentrated load, one half times five meters times 18 kilonewton per meter. And then the distance will be one third of five plus, you have the distance here of three meters. So we are going to add it up. So that would mean we will have the reaction at A. And let us calculate that. And according to our calculation, the value of the reaction at A is 26.25. So we are going to write it down, 26. 25 kilo newton. So you have now the reaction at A and then reaction at C. Now we can draw this shear diagram after determining 
the value of the shear diagram. Sorry, the, the reactions after determining the reactions. Okay. So we have here reaction at A. This is this has a value of 26.25. So this is 26.25. And because we have a first degree carb for the load, then we will have a second degree carb for the shear. And that would mean we have to determine the shear, that would be the shear diagram. And this is a second degree carb. So this one is a second degree carb. And this one is the point of zero shear. Now you may be wondering what's the location of this point zero shear. So later on, we are going to discuss that. Let me proceed with the drawing. So once we have the value of this, we, we need to determine the location, or I mean the, the value of this shear, okay? By simply taking, you have the shear at 26.25. Let me write down how do we determine the shear. Of course, you have the reaction, which is 26.25, and that is going up. And then there is a load of a triangular load, which is going down. So we are going to subtract one half. Base is five meters. And then height is 18 kilonewton per meter, which is basically equal to the 45 kilonewton equivalent concentrated load. So if you are going to subtract from the 26.25, the value of one half times five times 18, we will have negative 18.75. So this is negative 18. 0.75. And if you are going to notice this 18.75 is the reaction at C. So simply because we don't have any load between point B to point C, that means our diagram will be a zero degree carb. By the way, this is a first degree carb okay, for the load diagram. So this is a zero degree carb. And then you're going up okay, minus 18.75 kilonewton. We are going to add the reaction at C upward, which would give us a value of zero. So that would become zero. So this is positive, this is negative, this is the zero carb. Then that means this will be our shear diagram. Now you may be wondering, how do we determine this location? Okay. So that particular location of point of zero shear, remember that the point of zero shear is important because that is the location where if you are going to determine the moment, that is the location where the maximum moment is located. So if you would want to determine the location of that, let's say we are going to set that as X. And we have yet to determine that value of X. How do we determine? Now, if you are going to notice, we can isolate a triangle here. That is the load, actually. Let us isolate the triangle here. 
This is 18 kilonewton per meter. This is 18 kilonewton per meter. While this one is 5 meters. So the distance is 5 meters. And we have yet to determine the location of the value of x. And remember that the value of x is this distance. Okay, so from here to this point. From the support hinge to the point of zero shear. So if you are going to set this as our isolated triangular load, we can make use of the ratio and proportion. So how do we do that? By ratio and proportion, if you are going to refer to our figure here, by ratio and proportion, this smaller triangle is to this triangle. So by the way, this is a right triangle. So you can, you can use the ratio and proportion. So by ratio and proportion, we will have W, this W is to 18 as you have the distance of X is to 5. So that would mean we have the value of x with respect to w. So if you are going to determine the value of w, that is simply equals to 18 over 5 times x. So that's all for today. This is Dr. Ram at your service. We have solved another problem and see you on my next blog.